Okay, <clears throat> today is Saturday, December 28th, approximately 2.30 in the afternoon in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. I'm Timothy Moles, uh, the, the owner and operator of Crockett Leasing, and we are an aviation-based company, and right now we are talking about doing maintenance inspection, uh, proper inspection, hard to reach inspection, those areas that normally aren't inspected, uh, advancing with today's latest technologies uh, to come together and, and see if we can <clears throat> make our, ins our aviation aircraft inspection process easier or more thorough, um, giving more reassurance on material condition of the, the equipment that you operate on. So what I'm going to show you is uh, not just applicable to aviation, but it's applicable uh, to all maintenance type work, even busted concrete, looking at foundations under uh, crawl spaces and houses, um, vents, heater systems, ducting, ducting systems to see if there's a plug down in the duct or there's a hole or something to this effect and you can get in and do a visual inspection so what excuse me I apologize <clears throat> what we're going to discuss today is video HD video inspection in tight places bore scope in, ma in aviation maintenance world we call it bore scoping so what we have is the latest technology from Amazon to help put together a NDT bore scope endoscope inspection process in our aircraft in our general aviation aircraft that normally doesn't have access to this kind of equipment except for like once a year in an annual and a, and a lot of guys that do annuals don't have bore scopes so they don't they're not required to do bore scopes um so since it's not a mandatory thing and those bore scopes previously were very very expensive and still today they're very expensive if you order the the same called out spec type endoscope uh, i'll tell you that there is a major difference between what i have in front of us um versus what the old school bore scopes are the old school bore scopes aren't as near as clear to my belief as what we have in front of us today and those bore scopes have started at twelve hundred dollars each and they and i've i've operated with them i I own a per, personally. I own a a Beach Bonanza that's in West Virginia, and we used a bore scope and we did the compression test on the engine. Part of the it's kind of part of the process. Do you, and uh, that bore scope was iffy. I mean, it was the it was the right called out, specked out bore scope. Continental calls out for in the service manual. Um, bought through an aviation tool supply house. And I believe he paid twelve hundred dollars for it. What we have in front of us, I believe, is three times clearer and more precise than what those bore scopes are were back in the day. And we're talking in the nineties level of technology. So what we have here is twenty eighteen technology in front of us. Uh Part of it is, comes from the uh, dental industry. So what we have here on the right is dental, a dental system uh, to get in and do uh, HD video of close-up shots of teeth in the mouth. So it's set up to be cleaned and sterilized, and you see the dental mirror and in the process. And then this is USB charged. Uh, mini USB, so it's come with the adapter. And the same with over here, what we have on the left. What we have here on the left is the endoscope process. 
and it plugs into this. And so both of these, they're two separate systems and they work off of Wi-Fi. And we, I have here is an old telephone, an old phone that I use. Uh, currently, I'm using the phone. I I have a new phone that I'm videoing this with. It's an I, uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max, and this is an old prepaid AT and T prepaid phone at Walmart. I had for quite a while. It worked really well. I really had no issues with it. It just didn't have much storage for video, and it was not very good camera, so, not the best. And um, as wanting to do videos for YouTube, it was wasn't clear enough. I mean, it was anyway. Um, but I wanted to upgrade to the and have and also with the eleven the eleven Pro, the bigger screen uh, allows me to utilize this uh camera phone system tricorder <laughs> uh, as an instrument uh, aviation instrument in the aircraft I can set it on the yoke I can and, and the the 11 the 11 pro max the 11 pro max I have is much bigger than this camera or phone and anyway so that plan to use the, le the uh, iPhone as a primary instrument that is secondary to the instruments in the panel. So everything on the panel is primary. But far as having a a primary backup, using it, being able to run, so I can, with the iPhone, it has all the sensors and everything else and connected once I get the um, WASP GPS um, Stratus transponder and... Um, the uh, Stratus 3iX, which w will turn all the the WASP GPS and data and everything, and I can go right over my iPhone and have it as a heads-up display type of technology, and then have my steam gauges behind it as, as primary reference. I mean, whatever's on the screen should be on the gauges, and if there's any differences, I can begin to isolate and troubleshoot between different systems and i want to keep the old steam gauges for this reference so that i, ha I can have something to go back on because they things can be screwed with in a digital world you, you think you see something that's not there or whatever it's too easy on the steam gauges that's analog see this is digital all this technology here is digital including the laptop it's all digital. The only thing is analog really is the flames in the candle. Uh, but it's being recorded on digital. So everything you see is and experiencing what I'm talking about is digital. So it's a complete, you can, through different editing process, move, move things, add things, change. Well, I don't need that. I don't need somebody having that level of sophistication inside the cockpit with me. I'm not into that. Especially if it's all hooked up to ADSB out and ADSB in, that means you're connected to the ground Wi-Fi, basically, or in a, in a roundabout way. You're not connected to the towers or anything, but you are receiving, you're you're downloading and receiving data. You're getting FM satellite. Uh, you're getting the current uh, if you, uh, weather maps, the weather briefing. You can so you can have not only your current Tech, you know, flat screen technology it, with it up, down, and out, you know, alt, altimeter, airspeed, all that different stuff. It's also receiving data from the weather, weather service and puts the, the thunder and puts all the weather on top of the uh, overlay on your map. So, you, I mean, it's great. All the stuff is great. Uh, don't get me wrong. Four flight, you know, any of all that stuff is great. But if it's connected from a digital world, I don't trust it because it's in a digital world. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I don't trust, um, you know, anything across the digital realm. It can be manipulated and changed and 
or monitored or hacked and don't need it. Steam gauges, you have to get in between the gauges and make them cut. Now on the nav radio systems, this ground-based, uh, you know, for VOR, NDBs, uh, outer markers, inner markers, you know, the, where you're getting receiving a ground-based signal, each different component has its own signal band and doing its own thing. So it's much harder to go manipulate an AM radio transmission station tower than it is to sit in some black glass co or glass office cubicle world and hit a button and changes the whole GPS algorithm. I don't need to be in that world. Not as my primary. All of the digital world is my primary secondary. Meaning I primarily look at this stuff and I'm as far as quick quick read. But where the rubber meets the road is I look at my gauges and to make sure that I'm on my gauges correctly. And if it comes the difference between the computer world and the gauge world, I'm gonna take the gauge, if all things being equal, and I don't have any issues in the gauge world, all the gauge world seems to be fine, I'm gonna go by gauge world, not by digital world. And I gotta tell you, this digital world in the aviation, you know, being able to put an iPad and an iPhone and have basically a glass cockpit is absolutely awesome. I've never had it before. I, my flight experience was in the 90s and it was sectionals and E6B, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you figured it out and, and did it, did the, did the math by hand. And then call flight service center and they were everywhere. Flight service stations were everywhere. And almost every major airport, every class D airport and above generally almost had a flight service station to it. And, um, we'd go in there and get physical, wouldn't just call on the phone, just go, go in there and get the brief with them. Nice people. So anyway, that's, I'm going to keep the old school way of flying and planning math and planning my navigation and doing everything old school, even military old school on some things. And uh, use all the digital world to back it up. So having said that, kind of got on a tangent different than what we're working on today. So today is using a smartphone and turning it on turning it on Wi-Fi so pull this out I don't know how well the camera one digital camera records another digital camera. So, so I'm going to start with the easy one here, and this is the dental tool. So we'll let that sit. We'll take these two pieces. You have eight LED lights around a 1080p camera. Uh, shooting two megapixel pictures or HD video. But at a minimum, it'll be live over the smartphone using the fart, fart, <laughs> using the smartphone as a monitor at a minimum. But it's also got a uh, hard drive in there and you can record, take snapshot pictures and you can actually create video. So, and the reason I bought this is that this will fit down inside the spark plug hole. You can take a, on an 18 millimeter spark plug, you take it off and this will fit down in there and get and, and produce HD video of the exhaust and intake valves and the upper portion of the cylinder walls. And you can get down in there more. So the bore scope that this 
you know, is in you being in used in lieu of maybe a little longer, but it was real tiny stainless steel or aluminum tube with a glass reticle in it. And it was all bent. It was a bent mirror. If you get it, it would take a while, but you get it just right. You can get a pretty good glimpse of the exhaust valve, but it, you can, and you could see the cylinder walls. You'd see all the way down in there. But you're, I mean, you're really working on an old school periscope technology. So here we go. And all, all we do is we plug her in. So oh, just first, charging's done on this end. And it's a USB mini. Charged up. It's ready to go. Lasts about an hour or two. And so this will produce a Wi-Fi signal when I turn it on. Um, so we'll do that. We'll turn it on. Okay, so before I get it turned on, there's three lights. One is turned on when it's producing a Wi-Fi signal. Another one is power on. And then a third one is when it's charging. And then you have picture, shoot, to turn the shoot the cam or pull the trigger for the camera or the video. And then it has zoom up or zoom in. It's got three times zoom. And also, I think you control once you turn the power on, and then you hit the power button, tap it quick changes the light intensity i believe so let's give it a try hold the power button down okay we got full led lights we got our green power cable on oh and our wi-fi is on So this is our little inspection. Again, this is a dental tool, but works real good. <laughs> Put down a spark plug hole. Or anywhere, for that matter, that you can get this up in there. They had like in 14, 19, or 20, 2014, and they, they were a little bit bigger. And it still would work, but you'd have to shave the plastic down to get it down the hole. But this is now perfect. You don't even have to do anything to it. So let's. So tap once, turns it down. Taps two, turns it off. And then we got shoot the picture, and then zoom in, zoom out. Okay, so let's let me turn the phone back on here. And what's good with using one of these two and saving pictures, if you've got Wi-Fi, you can upload it to, um, you know, cloud. To Google Drive or or something like you know, and then you can go back in there and email these pictures to the client to the customer. Uh, in this case, this is Crockett Leasing creating its own files for ma its own maintenance files. And so what we have here, we have oh, we're connected. No internet. Okay, so that's good to go. So it automatically hooked up. So we can shut the Wi-Fi down. Try to do this through the camera. <laughs> Come on. All right. So we'll now go over and open up D 
TNT Wi-Fi. And there we are. It's on. So we're looking at sensitive so let's look in the back of the computer down here And I believe you had a better, this is a cheapy phone camera, or the resolution, it's just not as good as the, the iPhone, but it works. So this is just using the camera as a monitor right now. Get my hands repositioned here. Okay. Okay, I just took a picture of that. This is a vent on my laptop. I can look all the way inside the laptop. Let's try to focus or zoom. I mean, zoom, zoom max, zoom, zoom. Zoom two, zoom one, zoom zero. Zoom, zoom. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. shoot a movie so to shoot the movie I believe we have to press the movie icon here so I'm gonna reach down and touch okay it's showing recording I do not believe it does volume but if we're in here doing dental work and we're down in here between their teeth. Let's do this.
So you can see the material condition. So we will we won't be near it. We'll be in the exhaust valve be it that far away. Let me get We'll be that close. Oh yeah, you can see that. You'll be able to see that exhaust valve. Perfect. This is the turn down light. This is the turn down light. There we go. That's oh, max light. Yes, so that should work pretty good down around the exhaust valve. These really get to see if the color of it, if it's cracking or got to develop any hot spots. quick shot okay and this is 1080p we're gonna call it good and that turned off the video and we can go in here Pictures. Not bad for the, I mean, that's the little vent holes in the side of a laptop. Oh, this is my phone case. So you, you can really see, you can get down into the detail of the material condition. The scratches and nicks and dings. Yeah, that'll look nice. Alright, so let's go back. Try videos. Turn on that. That's what we just watched. Or just recorded, I should say. And so this will allow us to shoot HD video while we move the the valves. You know, exercise it through the cycle and just see if there's any side play in the exhaust or intake. You know, either intake or exhaust valve. We get down in there and look at the seats. And kind of, we, already, we, we know what we're doing. I think I paid twenty nine dollars for this phone camera. You know, it does does a just fine job for down and dirty. And so I have this iPhone high speed iPhone and I can use use it if need be or I can hook it to a I've got my iPad as long as it's wireless I can hook run this screen off my iPad and again it's 1080 and 720 all right so that is Yeah, that'll that'll work. Make a record all day long. Okay, so let's we're done with this one, and this is the this is the dental 
Colts. Buddy. And just come in a nice little box with a USB charger. So we'll set that to the side. This one, I really haven't spent too much time on because I'm working with the other one. But it, what we have here is a long ability to go clear down the wing if we want to. And so it, it'll hold itself. You can also use a um, hey, if, I think I found something good for a selfie stick. Uh, where did it go? No, no. So what I have here is a one each selfie stick. Could I believe? Oh, definitely can a portion of this, and then hook this on and run it out its whole length. So uh, I have a shorter one that works that I got. And it is a back scratcher. But same thing though. It's not as big, it's not as bulky and thought of just taking one fork and one fork and then just trimming the rest of this off and then leave it run out and then this just sits in the So you can do, you can then move it, and we have attachments that go on the end of this. We have a magnet. This is the magnet one, and then we have a mirror for a forty-five degree angle or so. If you're not quite, maybe a little more than forty-five, and then a hook. And this little black little sleeve helps lock. It doesn't work, does it? If I turn around, it's a little pointy down piece. It goes in and locks into the back here, and then the rubber sleeve slides over it and locks that down in there and you can use it for a j-hook pull get down in there and pull stuff out find your car keys and you, and whatever and however creative you want to get with it So let's see if we can get this turned on. I really haven't worked with this one before, so. This is new for all of us. I know the basics, how she's set up. Okay, camera. That's you, so on this, is a USB mini on both sides. 
that's the charging in this for the camera. Okay, fire up, fire and hole. Okay, now let's pull up our, our smartphone. And this time we want to use So we use I N I N S K A M, and both of these apps one that are really small and don't take much, and they don't really work well either. They'll they'll glitch out. They'll you'll be shooting video, and then to get out of video, it boots you out. And you got to go back in it. Um, so it's. And this was comments too. It's and it's happened to me on this phone. Now I haven't used it on the iPhone. Just kind of setting this up as a standalone little kit. And um, so, please connect to the device. Sorry, no photos. So, like I said, bear with me as I go through this. I think I need to get to the Wi-Fi. So it's not telling me. Is it not Wi-Fi? That's the phone. All right, so I'm gonna have to get the direction. Jill. 